Hey everybody, good to be with you today. I just had something I'm working on I wanted to show you a little bit uh, in, of, of a guitar. You, you might recognize this from some of the pictures that uh, I posted of, of the progress. And um, part of this job is what's called a fox binding or faux binding. And what it is, is this is a curly maple top in a mahogany body. And uh, this top is about a quarter inch thick and a faux or fox or whatever you want to pronounce it, basically I call it a natural binding, is really just leaving the, the maple edge actually unfinished in the sense of uncolored. And so you've got color on the top, but then the edge is left uncolored and it gives a binding look to it. Now the problem with that is that when you first do this, the, the top is actually colored all the way to the edge and, and you can't see it from outside. And uh, right now you'll see just a fine edge because I've already done a little bit before I thought, you know, hey, why don't I do a video on it? And um, part of the things, I thought I would just share some of the things um, that I've learned about doing these bindings. I love them, by the way, because curly maple and figured maple just has almost a marble marbleish look on the edge when it's done and buffed out with a clear coat on it and everything. And so what it's done is I'm going to route a angle, an angle on the edge of this. So I'm going to cut an angle off and I'm going to use a router to do that. Now a couple things that I've mentioned learning is typically the a binding, if you put binding on a guitar, it comes in different thicknesses. That, that's the white or whatever color you might see around the edge of a guitar. No thickness can be 060, 090, and I'm speaking in inches, 0 0.090 inches, uh, things like that. And so you'll see it from the front, and then you'll see it on the side. And so to get that look, to see it on the front, is to cut an angle off of it. And so uh, things I've learned. One is that it's easy to scratch your top when you're doing a, a faux binding or doing that chamfer with your router. Uh, your router base can scratch it if it's got any scratches. Mine happens to have a bunch of scratches in it just from use over time. So I've learned to take it and cover with some masking tape, some painter's tape, just to have a nice smooth finish on the router base. Another thing that I've learned, you'll notice that there is tape on this as well. That bearing on a router uh, is spinning at, oh, I think this one's 23,000 RPMs where I've got it set, something along that lines, or 20,000 RPMs. And that bearing can get really hot, even though it's spinning. It doesn't always spin as fast as the bit is. It, uh, it's not supposed to actually spin that fast. It's supposed to ride along, but it, it ends up spinning sometimes. And uh, I've learned that it can cut into your freshly colored uh, surface. Now, this, this surface has one coat of uh, lacquer, clear lacquer on it after the color coats. And there's, only, there's one reason why it has any clear coat on it at all, and that is for the binding, so that I don't scratch the color off so easy. And so I put tape around here for that bearing right on because I've done it the other way and it's ended up uh, scratching that color off. And it's, it's hard to recolor uh, something once you've sprayed it on like this and get it to match up. So, so I've got this on the top to keep from scratching the top, and then I've got this uh, on the side that I'm doing. And what I'm looking for is a chamfered edge. And you probably can't see it, but here's a test. And I measure it. I measure the width of that from the top with a micrometer. And on this one, it's measuring out at a .069, which, which is pretty good. It, it's going to be visible. I took one pass already at a lower level just to kind of get the look uh, of it. It's about an 030 now, so about half of what I want. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run around this. And another thing I've learned is when you're working on this and you've got the back, sometimes I'll even put tape on the back so that when I'm sliding it around, uh, but you've got to have something soft for that fresh finish to go on without scratching the color off. And so I'm going to go ahead and do this and I'll move the body while I'm at it and I'll turn on some dust collection uh, and so it'd be a little bit louder. So, so here we go, let me lower this down so you can see it. See what I'm doing more and uh, we'll see what happens here.
Okay, let me clean up my carpet a little bit so I don't scratch his body. On the sawdust while I'm moving the body around. And I'll tell you, this is a Colt Bosch router, and um, I really don't like this. It's, they're, this is a little older one, and the adjustment on them is just horrible. Uh, they break the little fine tooth uh, adjuster strips out immediately. The, the best of these small and little larger router is the DeWalt by far that has the same adjuster as what a large size router has and uh, I really keep this thing around just for chamfers and things like that. I'll move over to show you really the DeWalt that I'm talking about which is is this one. It has the same adjustability on it as their full-size router. Just excellent for micro adjustments. Uh, you, you get to this this uh, Colt Bosch and, and I've had it for years and it it works but it's it's not a, a great machine. Good power to it, but the adjuster is the real problem with it. So, but aside from that, this is the look then all of a sudden. See, see all of a sudden you can see it from the front. Now, uh, I'll have to touch it up a little bit or, or scrape it a little bit just to get any of the burn off that the router bit might have left. But uh, you'll see a big difference in this and uh, in the edge. You see there's a side edge, but then as you come, all of a sudden now you see from the front edge and uh, just a little bit about how to do the natural binding and uh, that extra little step that makes it visible from the front. Hope you enjoy.